Hey guys, how are you? My name is Jesus Conde, and today we're we're going to be talking about liquids. <clears throat> so the first thing you gotta do always is look for references, so you can understand how things look like. Here I have a few pictures for some um, some things I want to talk about water or liquids. The first property about property about uh, the liquid is that it's reflective. It has reflection. So it's something that um, a lot of people are know about. Uh, reflection is only that there's a surface and it repeats what is in front of it. In this case, what is on top of it, because it's a lake. Um, it's water we're talking here. Uh, but the refraction, uh, there's uh, some people that does, don't know about. The refraction does the opposite. Look at the background of the picture. You have a bridge and in the in the bubble there is the bridge inverted so it's the opposite of, of reflection and it's going on inside of the of the object uh, there's more technical stuff going on in there but it's the easiest way to understand it's something that is going on inside um, for example in the glass of water you can see how things get distorted and what I wanted to talk to you about is as long as you make it look like um, like it's like that's what's happening in there it's okay for example here I have a few um, things that are going on in there I want you to see um, but the best way to understand that is to make in a little mesh of the of the object that you're working on in this case is liquid so making little lines to understand um, the direction of the shape and the ge geometry of the shape if you, if you were seeing it on 3D um, you can kind of understand better how what what do you do to make it look like water uh, when it's going to make a reflection when it's going to make a refraction and all the stuff <clears throat> yeah so we have reflection uh, we have refraction and we also have um, specular but in in any of these examples I, ha I, ha I got here you can see the specularity of the water or the the I don't know how to say that the the shiny part so but we're going to do it uh, I have a gray background so I I like this this reference but I didn't want to do it in white so I dim out a little bit I started sketching a little bit with one of the darker colors of the of the water I took it with the eyedropper and here I'm just sketching some 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 dark parts of the of the water uh, I took a um, brighter color and I'm I'm starting from the in the left we're going to have the shadow part and in the right we're going to have the the brighter part and it's just that just take the um, some middle colors that in this case it looks a little bit of green and that would work just fine one of the important things to for the water is to make it look like it's fluid like it's not a, um, hard so we're going to work a lot with the with the letter R uh, which is the smudge tool and the new photoshop that's what I'm using there in the new photoshops is rotate but you should you should find it with the icon which is a little a little finger okay so this is when I started to look better I took a, a brighter color and make it on the edges um, kind of like a specular uh, right now but you'll see in a few seconds what I'm talking about <clears throat> see here I'm making it on the edges only and it really does look like I'm reflecting something that is on, on top or in on top and in a little bit in the back so I thought that was important mm, when you're working with water is an important element to make it look like it's water 
So at this point, I closed my reference because I, I thought I didn't need it anymore. I have all the information that I I need to continue because I don't want to copy. I, I want to try to understand what makes it look like water. So there I'm doing a few stuff to, to, to make it look more like water with the information that I have. There I'm trying to do some specular coming from the for some light that is coming from the left from the right I mean and notice that I um I I, I made it and I I really don't like too much the result. So I just erase and try to to make it a little bit softer. Um, but later um, you'll see that I realized that the the best way to achieve the water thing is to using the smudge tool. There I'm go again. So it's something that you have to keep in mind when working with fluids. I also didn't want to make a perfect sphere because this water is liquid is kind of it's not doesn't have um hard consistency I don't know how to what's the word but <clears throat> the, the density of the material that I wanted to make like some um, uh, the it's it's falling a little bit and notice I'm always uh, switching to the to that art art tool the smudge tool. I burn out a little bit with the letter O on the keyboard, which is Dutch tool. You have to check that the Dutch tool is in highlights. If it's in mid tones, it's not going to work the same way. Notice I'm, how I'm using the smudge tool again. So I could say that one way to achieve the liquid uh, material is um, you make some some a little bit of uh, work with the brush and then then just use this much tool a little bit on top of it and you have to be switching constantly between the between the B which is the brush the brush tool and the R in the in the Photoshop CS3 which is this a smudge tool if you if you don't have it you have to program it with the keyboard shortcuts on the preferences which is really easy see there I'm using the R again this much tool and it really does give that effect of fluid and randomness something that I I thought that was important is that it's, it's kind of random the reflections there are some points that you can really you cannot really understand what's going on because it has the water has so so little tiny um, movements and, and and little shapes that are, are not um, hard, so you should have some a little bit of randomness in there. I took off my sphere to look just look at the water, change the brightness a little bit. And then I thought I needed something else on that side, so I put it more reflection of the light that's coming from the right. And I think even <laughs> I wanted to draw a little, a little fish in, on the inside, but I, I thought it was going to take too much time. So I at the end I just dropped that idea, <laughs> but it will look, it will look cool. So, yeah, I, I think it turned out pretty well. Um, I'll, be, I'll be trying to make some new new tutorials about other type of fluids. Um, there are different kinds of water. Ocean water looks totally different. And lake water, stuff like that. Uh, it depends on, the, on what you have on the bottom. In this case, it's, it's in the air floating. floating. And it's supposed to be transparent, but if if it's in a lake, it should be completely different. <clears throat> so this is this is it, guys. This is the final result. I hope you like it. I try to make it short. 
So I wanted to talk to you about some ways you can help me out doing this tutorial. The first thing is share uh, this tutorial. You can press like on the Facebook or or comment. I will share it automatically or follow me. Uh, I also take some donations. Uh, I already have few. I wanted to thank you about that. And you can make it. You, you can make some donations through Amazon gift cards or or PayPal to that email that you have in there, and or even webinar points. I I receive a lot of webinar points since I got I started doing my tutorials, and that really helped me a lot. So please keep doing it. So this is it, guys. I hope you like this tutor tutorial. Uh, I will try to make more like this shorter and specific ones um <laughs> seems like you like you like them better than the than the large ones even that some people really like the way that in the larger one i can explain uh, all the process but this one are cool too so i'm gonna keep doing them thanks very much for your support i'm out